Soon after, Danish scientist Hans Christian Ørsted discovered by accident in 1820 that electricity can produce magnetism. English scientist Michael Faraday studied the phenomenon and wrote in his notebook in 1821, "Convert magnetism into electricity." It took Faraday ten years to find the answer. In 1831, Michael Faraday successfully converted magnetism into electricity. In his experiment, Faraday used an iron ring wrapped with two wires. The first wire was connected to a battery with a switch. The second wire was connected to a galvanometer. A galvanometer is like a sensitive ammeter that can be used to measure small electric current. Faraday noticed that an electric current was produced in the second wire when he closed the switch. And again, when he opened the switch, even though there was no battery here connected to the second wire. Furthermore, Faraday noticed that no electric current was produced in the second wire when the switch either stayed open or stayed closed. Faraday did further experiments on this phenomenon and came up with his law of electromagnetic induction. Here I have a wire coil, a solenoid that is connected to only the galvanometer, no batteries. The solenoid is hollow with nothing inside. And these are neodymium magnets. I can induce an electric current in this solenoid when I stick the magnet into it. But there's no current if the magnet just sits inside. So it is not the presence of the magnetic field that induces a current. If I pull the magnet out, a current is induced again. When I push the magnet in, the induced current goes one way. When I pull it out, it goes another way. When I push it in, the needle points. The, the needle goes to the left. When I pull it out, it goes to the right. And I get a small current if I move the magnet slowly. I get a larger current if I move the magnets in or out at a faster speed. So we only have induced current when there is a change in the magnetic field inside the solenoid, and the higher the rate of change, the higher the current. Also, if I remove the magnetic field inside the solenoid by pulling the magnet out, the needle goes to the right. And I can get the same result if I remove the magnetic field by pulling it out on the other side. The needle also goes to the right. What if I flip the magnet over? When I push it in, now the needle goes to the right. When I pull it out, it goes to the left. Opposite to what happens when it was like this. And then I flip it over. More specifically, to produce an induced current, what we need is a change in this thing called magnetic flux. The Faraday's law of induction says the induced EMF equals to the negative n times delta phi b over delta t, where n is the number of loops in a wire coil. Phi b is called magnetic flux. So delta phi b over delta t is the rate at which magnetic flux changes. We talk about the induced EMF because this induction process is kind of like a battery providing a voltage to pump induced current in the wire loop. That's why we call this voltage electromotive force EMF. By the way, around the same time Faraday made his discovery. An American scientist, Joseph Henry, made a similar discovery independently. However, Faraday was the first to publish his work, so we have Faraday's law of induction. To produce an induced EMF, this magnetic flux has to change. The higher its rate of change, the higher the induced EMF, and therefore the higher the induced current. Also, the more the loops we have in a wire coil. The bigger the induced EMF. That's why we use the solenoid with lots of wire turns for our demonstration. In the next few lessons, we will look at what magnetic flux is and what this negative sign means.